Okay, welcome back to the shop. Today we have an interesting problem solution. Um, imagine we're at the milling machine and you have a workpiece clamped in the vise on an angle. Like this. You have your square corner, you have your vise jaw right here. And now you want to register off of this edge. Um, you want this to be your zero. How do you align your milling machine spindle with this um, with this edge? You can't touch it with a normal dial uh, with a normal edge finder because. Um, course there is no no flat surface to approach you can't use a wiggler not really and a dial indicator is also not very useful in this um, in this case what you can do is you can chuck up a, a pointy uh, uh, around a needle a cylindrical ground needle and align it by eye with the edge. Using a magnifier you can reach pretty good um, precision with that but that depends a lot on the um, on the machinist uh, how close he gets it and um, I want to make a small gadget that helps gives me the ability to pick up um, an edge of a workpiece that's at an angle with the edge finder and the gadget is pretty simple it's a it looks like a pac-man it has a given diameter and a 90 degree cutout to half the diameter so um, this is uh, half the diameter and this is half the diameter and in the center of course is a relief cut and that's all and that's the gadget to pick up such an edge with an edge finder um, let's change over to new, new page it's pretty simple you have your workpiece with the edge up here 90 degree wise jaw you drop this your pac-man over this your pac-man gadget and you have your diameter here and from here to here it's half the diameter so you approach this edge with the with your uh, with your edge finder with your edge finder touch off on this surface move over half the diameter of our little tool and of course half the diameter of your edge finder and then your spindle is dead on accurate above the above this edge and now we're going to make this little tool we have our slug turned to diameter it's um, 16 millimeter very precise almost on the spot a few thousands of a millimeter over we cut it to length we chamfered every edge and now we're going over to the milling machine and make the uh, 90 degree cutout okay this is going to be a bit of a sketchy setup but 
Uh, the reason for this setup uh, with the big overhang on the side is so I can come in with my micrometers, with the disc micrometers and measure the height of the remaining material from the bottom up to my machine to the cutout. So I'm going to cut away the material right here. And um, I need the overhang, I need to use the uh, disc micrometer that I can come in with the discs into the clearance hole over the center line of the workpiece uh, so I can measure the real height. And same for the big overhang on top so I can come down over the center line of the piece and measure it there. Okay, I touched off the top surface and the side and now we just hog out the material till we're almost there. When the, then we take a light skim pass and uh, measure it and then we'll finish it to the nominal size. Okay, we, we removed the bulk of the material and now this is where our disc micrometer comes in handy. With the disc shaped anvils we can get into this relief cut and actually measure over the center line of the workpiece. Um, and that will give us the true true thickness of this remaining material. Okay, this should be um, 8.58 millimeters thick and we want 8 millimeters. So Let's take another 5 tenths for a millimeter, measure again, and then we will take a finish cut. And we take a spring pass, of course. Okay, and we're at uh, six and a half hundredths, um, that's uh, 6.5 hundredths of a millimeter oversize. We'll take another, we will take this cut, measure it again, and then we we'll back off from this surface by a few hundredths of a millimeter and finish the bottom surface. Okay, I skim cut the second surface and now I'm going to take a measurement. This works a bit better because gravity is helping me. Okay, we're at nine and a half hundredths of a millimeter. So we go down nine hundredths, take another cut and call it done. Okay, now I want to check for the accuracy of my machined piece and um, this is the setup I came up with. I have a 10 mm gauge block that I will rest the piece on so it clears the surface plate which is cleaned. I set my gauge block up here. Um, then I have an 8 mm gauge block that is as high as this section should be and I drop it on there and I have my dial indicator with my nifty new 
a magnetic stand. This is the smallest Noga stand and I like it pretty much. I don't like big uh, indicator stands because my machines are not that big and I do a lot of small work. So I like this very much. I move over my dial indicator. This is a 100 millimeter dial indicator. I already zeroed it on top of the 8 millimeter gauge block. And now I take my piece, I make sure that my surfaces are clean. Really, you can't have any dirt when you try to work accurate. And then I go with my dial indicator over this piece and find the high spot. And there we have it, it's right at zero. So this side is perfectly 8 millimeters high or cut perfectly in half. Um, now for the second side, of course I already did this and I know what's the outcome. Um, this is one hundredth of a millimeter off. And um, one hundredth of a millimeter is really not that much. It's um, half of a thou or five ten thousandths of an inch. Imagine you're at the milling machine, you have a workpiece at a really wonky angle. You just checked it up. In the Y's you used your sign bar to set it up precisely at the angle you wanted and now you want to reference off this, um, this top edge. You could use a, um, a point, uh, like an um, end mill shank you ground on a point and align it by eye with a magnifier. That works fine, that's not super precise, but you get in the area of two, three, four hundredths of a millimeter. But in this case, the edge has a chamfer. Then it's hard to know where to reference off. Um, we want the real, the we want the position of the um, theoretical edge, the intersection of these two planes, and we get this by using the little tool we made right now. We drop it on there, and now this distance from this outer surface to the center of this tool is exactly 8 millimeters. That's half the diameter of this, um, this slug. And these 8 millimeters give the distance to the, um, to the theoretical edge. You hold it with one finger, be aware of the spinning spindle. Don't touch the drive slots up here or the chuck or anything else. And then you approach it like usual. Okay, there we had it. And move it until it kicks out. There we are. Okay. We cracked it. Shut off the spindle. Now our spindle is um, offset to the edge by half the diameter of our tool and half the diameter of our um, dial indicator. Uh, not dial indicator, um, edge finder. So that's eight millimeters. And half the diameter of this is three millimeters, so we have to go over um, 11 millimeters to be over the edge of the workpiece. Okay, now we should be right over the center of the edge. For double checking, we can pull out the, um, the edge finder and use a. This is a carbide end mill, I ground a 60 degree 
point on it and that's what I use to align work pieces uh, by eye. Sometimes that's the only way to align something and now we just go down onto our edge. Okay, I brought the camera in and this is right on the edge of the work piece. Um, so our little tool works and oops um, and this will come in handy in the future I'm sure um, I will deburr some of the edges a bit more put uh, put a chamfer on them and then it's ready to be used but I will do that off camera you don't need to see that um, you have seen me deburr work pieces a few times so Hope you enjoyed, thank you for watching and see you next time.